Father God, we come to you today with prayers of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for all the many mercies and blessings and comforts of life you've given each and every one of us. And Father God, most recently we give you a prayer of thanksgiving for the success of our hometown baseball team. Father God, I do pray a prayer of thanksgiving for both teams that played. Burns was the state champion last year. Green Central, the state champion this year. And both teams played respectable, sportsmanlike baseball games. And Father God, as we, we were there and we enjoyed those baseball games, we were reminded that the team won the baseball games. The team working together won the baseball teams. We are ever reminded that outcomes of events are more positive when you have the team effort. And we thank you so much for our, for our players, the families, the fans. We thank you so much for that outcome. And Father God, we just give you the praise, the honor, the glory for that. Now, Father God, as we assemble here today, I pray that the things that we say and do will be pleasing in your sight and that this team will be endued with the wisdom to make the best decisions on behalf of Greene County. Father God, thank you for our first responders. Thank you for our military. Thank you for our law enforcement. Thank you for those who provide the services that protect us. Now, Father God, as we go about this business, I just pray that everything we say and do will be pleasing in your sight. And these things I pray in your name, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Join me with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <coughs> Fellow commissioners, you have in your packets the proposed agenda for today's meeting. Is there a need for any change to the proposed agenda? Hearing no changes, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the agenda for today's meeting. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. You also have in your packets the consent agenda for today's meeting. Is there a need for any change to the proposed consent agenda? There is no change, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the consent agenda for today's meeting. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Sure. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes carried. The motion, the ayes have it, the motion is carried unanimously. At this time, I'm going to open a full day floor for a public hearing for a proposed economic development business investment grant for green grain and cattle. Mr. Trey. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning sir. Uh, Green Grain Cattle LLC plans to create 22 new jobs over the next three years and invest $7 million in capital for real property investments. Uh, these positions will offer competitive wages averaging above the Green County average private wage of $38,555. Based on the project summary submitted by the company, they, Green Grain and Cattle qualifies for a tier tax grant while under our new incentive policy. Year one will be 50% paid property tax back to them after they pay that in. Uh, year two is 40% and year three is 30%. The estimated economic development grant totals up to be $62,094 over three years with a projected new property tax revenue of $542,000 over the next decade for green cattle and grain. Um, I'll open up for any questions you have. They got started yet? They have not. From my understanding, got started. They have doing some testing. Testing. Mr. Chair, I think it's a good grant. 
helps one of the businesses in the county to better agriculture business. So I move to approve the motion to propose this economic development investment grant for green grain and cattle company. Sure. Before we take the oh, motion, that's we got before we take the motion is I'm there sorry. anyone from the public who has any comments, questions, concerns relative to the proposed incentive program? Here and then I will declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner. I move, I move. same thing. Okay. <laughs> Have a motion to approve this incentive grant. Is there a second? Okay. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that one? Here and then, those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. <clears throat> At this time, we'll, I will open a public hearing for a proposed budget ordinance. Thank you, sir. Um, before you, you have the proposed 24 25 budget. Um, if you recall, some of the highlights from that proposed budget included no tax increase, uh, the tax remaining at 0.786 per $100 valuation, 3.5% uh, COLA for all employees, um, the initiative to bring all vehicles in the eight-year vehicle replacement plan with 13 purchases, um, the push to reflect more, uh, more participation from local fire departments for our first responder program, um, we have nine now. Um, the budget also contained increases in water, sewer, and landfill fees, and then also Sales tax is projected to remain flat. Um, the proposed budget continues a path of conservative growth promoted by Green County government. The county continues to earn returns on its investments, both tangible and intangible. Green County commissioners should be commended for their leadership and accomplishments in creating policies of growth and expansion while remaining true to Green County values and traditions. Department heads should be equally recognized for putting the vision of the county commissioners into action. Are there questions? Um, on the proposed budget. Hey, the budget's good. Do I have any public comments relative to the proposed budget? Here and then I will declare the public comment, the um, public hearing closed. Do I have a motion for approval of the budget? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a motion. Okay. For discussion. Okay. <clears throat> well, I prefer a neutral revenue budget that provides return on any surplus to tax payers after the proposed tax increase is noteworthy. However, I have several reservations about certain elements of the budget that require some consideration of particular adjustment. A public service. My primary responsibility is to the community, not personal financial gain. Given the 106% salary increase we received last year, an additional 3.5 cost of living adjustment is unwarranted. We should not be continuously seeking pay raises for part time role dedicated to serving our council. Therefore, I cannot support a proposed cost of living increase for commissioner. As you're aware, I emailed the Social Services Director last week after noticing several cuts in her budget. The Social Services Director highlighted several critical needs, additional staff to handle the refugee application and foster child <coughs> costs due to the influx of Haitian refugees in Medicare, Medicaid fashion. Office supplies that lock file cabinet <coughs> gas to charge, which I understand they have requested gas twice and got used gas. Also, adequate travel funding for mandatory staff training, which is necessary for effective service delivery. If you read your budget, and I hope you have, there have been several budget lines recommended amounts higher than the previous year's actual spent without explanation, raising transparency concern. Instead of allotting district of funds to these undisplayed areas, we should provide direct resources to address the pressing needs of such a service department. While I support much of this budget as an improvement, I cannot vote for it in the current form. It failed to address the ongoing needs of our employees while providing commission for the unjustified raid, which could cut funding from areas with unexplained increases and react really direct those funds is not necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I would like for Kyle to address the issue about social services. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, we had a budget workshop May twenty second, ten AM. <clears throat> 
formerly Pine Conference Group. Your Chester Sherman's director had court that day. They came in and said she was fine with the budget. Yes, so I emailed them asking for explanation because mm -hmm. there was huge trust on our budget. Yeah. You got a copy of that email. All of us got a copy of that email. Actually, you know, for that question, bring Matt right up here. We, no, this is a trial. But I will say that let's use current year. I believe in the current year, DSS requested $4.8 million for expenditure and offset that with $2.58 million in revenue. And I think we worked our way down to $3.8 million. As we stand today, there is still $700,000 in unspent appropriation. I know that their salary will take up 300000 of that. So there's going to be four to $500,000 of unspent appropriation in current year. If it's not, if I'm not mistaken, the commissioners kind of asked me to make the budgets as efficient as possible. In current year, I believe $4.7 million was asked for, and it's been cut down to $3.7 million being offset by less revenue in, in, the, in the proposed budget than in current year. Um, a position was asked for, and if I'm not mistaken, in conversation with the DSS director, I said, let's fill the positions we have first that we currently have before we start adding people to the ship. And she agreed to that. The budget that you see in front of you was agreed upon by the DSS director and myself. Is that not correct, Ms. Smith? Yes, so I did put in my email that I did meet with you twice, and I, I did not argue or anything, and, you know, we came to an agreement, but I guess I want to make it very clear that, you know, we do have two children that are in our custody that are illegal citizens, meaning they are all county dollars. I have made that clear to the county manager. I have made that clear to our county attorney. I am projecting that we are going to need at least $30,000 to support these children, and that is just paying for placement. That is not supporting the other 30 children that I have that need hygiene products, clothes, other necessities for school. That is just supporting the placement alone. And I just want to make that clear because I, I don't want to be in put back on me of why you didn't ask for that. That's all I'm saying. Mr. Chairman, it is our jobs to budget for standard business cases. If there's a, an abnormal business case, we'll address it. That's what the budget amendments are for. The same situations that she is concerned with, we face in our current budget. And I would just ask that we go through our normal budgeting process and we address these things if they occur. We can't budget based on what ifs and fear. We have to budget on standard business case. Commissioner Jones, let me ask you a question since you sit on the Social Services Board. How many months have you known about these Haiti refugees? It's not normal for this time. This is, this is, we have known about this for several months. I've known about it for at least seven months now. Seven months out of 12 months. It's normal. That's right. And we've handled it in our current budget, which makes me believe that we'll handle it, handle it in this proposed budget. And if something doesn't happen where it's handled within the dollar confinements of the proposed budget, we'll do a budget amendment. That's the county's responsibility. I'll say this. I'm going to vote for this budget. I'm going to vote it and make a nice budget. <clears throat> Wondering where that money is going to come from. And I don't know how to disagree with that, giving ourselves a 3.5% quota increase. Mr. Chairman, if, if you're not comfortable with the budget, then my question would be where do we get it from? Do you want to, with the limited resources we have, do we cut the sheriff's budget because public safety is not important? Do we cut the health budget because health and wellness isn't? Or do you want to cut recreation because kids? I know several budget so, because there's several budget line recommended hard <coughs> out different expenses. I'm just asking that we look at the track record and see that we are doing things in a process that meets the county's needs. Assuredly, we will handle any situations that arise, especially on needs for children and We've never turned our backs on our kids when we've had situations. We're not going to start that. Yes, we will handle those unusual situations as they occur, if they occur. We have built the budget based on history. And uh, Are you at situations this time, that are ready to occur. Thank you. At this time, I will call the question. Those in favor of the budget, you'll have a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Let me back up. I don't think I've closed the public hearing yet. Yes, I think did I, did I close you it? Did. You did. I did, okay. 
Yeah, Question be being called, have a motion. Motion on the floor to second vote. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, once again, working together is the best way to proceed in the future. Have a motion and a second to approve the budget. Those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay? Opposed. Budget passes four to one. Three to one. Three to one. Thank you. Now, remind me that we have an absentee. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have anyone for public comments? We do not. Do we have someone with a, a damaged uh, left hand there that wishes to speak? Yes, sir. Dr. Kitch, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for inviting me. Um, Good morning. Actually, stood at one of these podiums a very long time, so I make sure I'm doing it correctly. So, thank you all for inviting me to speak here, too. Uh, I was called for you today to you know, introduce myself and um, you know, greet you all again and discuss our EMS destination plan and some aspects of our EMS system. Um, first off, I've been with you all for um, almost four years now. I started in November of 2020, as you know, the director. It's been an extreme pleasure to work in this county to see the transition, to see the growth, to see the transformation to one of the newest uh, paramedic systems in North Carolina. I can say the the impact on the community has been wonderful. I think we have done amazing things. I work with amazing people every day in this county, and it is, it is truly a delight to serve this community. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. One of the things that comes up a lot, and I'm sure it comes up for you all, it comes up for me, is the question of where do patients go? Obviously, we don't have a hospital in this county. Uh, it's not like we lost one, we just don't have one. So it poses a very interesting situation. Where, where do we go? How do we get the right patients to the right hospital? because that in itself is, is truly a, a medical question and a medical decision. As a medical director, I have to weigh clinical factors with operational concerns to provide both the best care to every patient in the community, whether they are in the ambulance or whether they may call an ambulance in the future. We have limited resources, as I'm sure has been mentioned many times in this meeting already, and to balance the needs of the one and the needs of the many is, is sort of a, is a, is a, is a balancing act. Uh, several times a week, actually even several times a day, I'll get notification that we have no ambulances left in the county. They're all out of county, all out of service, all on a call, all returning from a call. I think yesterday I received at least two notifications, probably a few more. Um, so there are times where there are no ambulances present in the county. So as such, maximizing our in-service time and minimizing our, our time out of county is essential to ensure that when someone calls 911 for an emergency, the ambulance will be available for them. We do this in several ways. One, we have specialty plans for special complaints that are designated by the state as necessary. These include trauma, stroke, massive heart attack, and pediatrics, because all of those have special hospital designations in North Carolina. Uh, hospitals can be designated as a trauma center, or a, uh, a STEMI, or excuse me, a cath lab center, or, or a stroke center, or a pediatric center. And those designations are defined in, in state regulations, and it's how we help determine which hospital people go to. Obviously, a severely injured patient from a car crash would be better served at the trauma center. A patient who's having a massive heart attack would be better served at a hospital with a cardiac catheterization lab. So getting those types of patients to those hospitals uh, takes precedence and, and is one of the documented protocols that we have. Uh, we have templates, we work with them, we revise them, we train on them. Um, new templates have come out from the state, we're working to optimize those to further refine uh, our transportation of patients. For all others who don't fall into one of those four categories, five categories, um, <coughs> assert that our patients should be transferred to the closest appropriate hospital. We give that term appropriate so there's a little bit of clinical reasoning and clinical decision making, that it's not just use Google, use MapQuest, use Yahoo Maps to tell you where to go. There's some clinical factors that can weigh in and we allow our highly trained EMS clinicians to make that determination. By getting folks to the closest hospital in the setting of an emergency, it gets them to an emergency department where they can receive definitive care, stabilization, and if needed, transport to a different hospital. I can understand that the transfer process can be lengthy and can be costly, but to stabilize the emergency in the time, most timely fashion is, is our precedent. We need to get patients to where they can see a doctor, see a nurse practitioner, see a PA, have advanced resources of an emergency department, be stabilized, and most of the time return home, occasionally be transferred to uh, Greenville or transfer to a, a higher level of care. Yeah, it's our goal to get everyone to the right hospital in the right time and then return to the county as quick as possible so we can serve our community. 
So as such, our destination plan is, is simply this. Patients go to the closest appropriate hospital. If they need to go to a further hospital, it's because of a very special need, a very special resource that the hospital has to offer. Most of that specialty care is in Greenville, um, although there are, are growing needs in the community and the community hospitals are, are beginning to add more resources as well. I know Lenore is working to expand its ICU coverage in the near future exactly for, for that reason. If there's any questions I can answer for you, anything I can do to help explain how we work, I'd be more than happy to. Any questions? Thank you. Thank Thanks for your job. Well. <clears throat> very well. Good job. Our office is always more than healthy. If, if constituents have questions or concerns about why they went to a certain hospital, we can answer questions about their care. Um, but I can't, you know, divulge why your neighbor may have gone to a different place because that's a that's a medical fact and it's a, it's personal information. Um, I can also help. Be more than happy to help constituents try to figure out, you know, why they were transferred to another hospital um, and refer them back to hospital administration if they have concerns about their transfer. Um, so I work in both in the, the academic center in Greenville, but I also work at community hospitals. I've worked at hospitals that have no inpatient beds. I've worked at Bertie. I've worked at a lot of hospitals in the community that are, are resource limited. Um, so I understand both the, what the other hospitals are coming from. I'm more than happy to assist people who have questions about their care. We thank you for your passion and compassion. Uh, it's a difficult task. We do frequently have, I say frequently, and it's fairly frequently, we do have people transported that rather went somewhere else. Um, I clearly understand the need to put our services in unit and uh, in service, put our ambulances in service and get them back home as soon as possible to facilitate another call. We understand that and we appreciate it. And um, on a personal note, I've had a situation, I've ridden the ambulance one time and I didn't go where I wanted to. But I also recognize that where I went, got great care, Everything was good. All my records were in another county, and I ended up in, in, in Lenore, but all my records were in Greenville. Those things happen. Um, and the most important thing to recognize is that we are providing services to our citizens, and we're doing it in the, in the most efficient manner possible, and we do have compassion for people. And, and you stated all of that in what you said, and we thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Kiggs. We appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to serve the committee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. County Manager. Thank you, sir. Just a few short items for your action this morning. <clears throat> the first is acceptance of a directed grant from the legislature for the Register of Deeds. Uh, directed grant 2026 RD in the amount of $2,000 and the grant is to be used to for the preservation of historic records and files. Um, this is much like the directed grants received for the courtroom and the economic development function by Mr. Cash recently, um, just to get included in that trench. It's a, just a, a grant to be accepted. We'll handle it in the finance department as we would any other, uh, any other grant. Are there questions? Move to approve the state directed grant for the rest of Deeds Office, Mr. Chair. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Sir. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hear none. Those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item for action is appointment to the Aging Planning Committee. Recently, we've advertised for applicants for the Aging Planning Committee. An applicant has been has applied for this position, Ms. Rosa Jones Carr. Uh, her application is attached. This is recommended from the Aging Planning Committee. So if there are no questions, I would ask for a motion to approve the appointment of Ms. Rosa Jones Carr. Mr. Chair, I move to approve uh, appointing Rosa Jones Carr to the uh, aging planning committee. I have a motion and have a second. Sure. And a second. Any further discussion? Here are none. Those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <clears throat> the ayes have it. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. 
Our next appointment is for the Regional Aging Advisory Committee, otherwise known as the RAC. Um, there are three uh, vacancies or three appointments needed for that board. We have received two applications, Mr. Dwight Moore and Mr. Elliot Ashburn. Um, this was advertised as is appropriate, um, and the Regional Aging Advisory Committee is recommending the appointment of these two individuals. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. I have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion on that one? There are none. Those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Our last appointment for the morning is to the Senior Center Advisory Committee. Um, five applicants were received. Um, they are listed. And Ms. Sharon Harrison is requesting the appointment of these five individuals. Are there questions? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the five individuals to the Senior <coughs> Center Advisory Committee. I have a motion. Sorry. And a second. Any further discussion? Here are none. Those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. My last item for your attention this morning is approval of the Green County Transportation Charter Service Policy. This is something that we have had in place, but a signed copy could not be located. So we're just going to go through the whole process and ask that it be approved so that uh, it can be put into the compl uh, compliance booklet for our next compliance review. Housekeeping. It's housekeeping, yes sir. Move to approve the charter policy for the county for transportation community. I have a motion, do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Don't we have to do this again? Oh, we should. Okay. Yeah, no further discussion. Those in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried unanimously. That's all I have for you. Thank you. Madam County Attorney. No comments. Commissioner reports and recommendations. I wonder, and this is just off the fly, do we need to, could we uh, facilitate a resolution recognizing our high school baseball team for being the state champions this year? This is the sixth time Green Central has been the state champion. We'd like to. We're like on behalf of the county, I'd like to I'd like to see a resolution acknowledging their accomplishment, if we could. And the only other thing I have at this time, there is a lot going on, I know that. But we do have the Juneteenth celebration coming up. I think it's February the fourth uh, February. <laughs> February. June the fourteenth. I'm telling you what's the truth. But it is June the 14th on Friday the 14th, and I think it's a three-day weekend yes, celebration. It starts on Friday. It starts on Friday. The opening is on Friday the 14th. 12, 11, going on? I haven't officially been told, but I know on my calendar I have 11. It's been being around the lunchtime right. frame. And, right. uh, okay. But it is, it is June the 14th, and we'll look forward to that. <coughs> Any other commissioner uh, reports or recommendations? Informed Bureau is going to have a training for grain bin disasters or getting trapped in a grain bin, but I think it's kind of toward the last of June, but I'll let you know when we have our next meeting. As long as it's not February, right? That's no, not February. <laughs> oh, my. We've got several fire departments, uh, Lawsonburg, Bullhead, and uh, maybe Fort Lewis, Snow Hill. All of them are going to be doing the training. Sometimes accidents do happen. Getting oh, yeah. trained in a grain bin is not not good. So looking yeah. forward to that. We just need mm -hmm. one of that one. Yeah, we've had, we've had a fatality in the county with, with that one. We have. You do what I was going to say. You said it for me. I told you about it. <laughs> what were you going to say? The resolution. Oh. Here, no other commissioner reports and recommendations. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chair. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
Here, none of those in favor of the motion to adjourn signify say by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried.